All right, wait a minute. Action. All right, let's get this shit done. All right, we're talking about EVs today, uh, electric vehicles. Uh, not all negative, even though I'm not a fan of EVs, but I'm going to give you some of the uh, truths and uh, mistruths that come about during EVs. Um, <clears throat> I've done a lot of research on this, so I'm not one of those right-wing conspiracy guys. So uh, I've, I've looked at it from both angles. I've looked at it from a mechanics angle. I've looked at it from a consumer's angle. And uh, this, you know, and what I'll come up with today is going to be what I feel is the truth and stuff you need to know before, if you're considering buying an EV, such as a Tesla or whatever else. Um, but, all right, well, let's get into it. All right. I got this right from the, uh, this is from the Auto Week magazine. So it's, it's a reputable publication. And it's got five ugly truths, five dirty lies about uh, EVs. So uh, I'll, I'll touch on one of these. And I, I agree with some of these. And some of them I disagree with. And I'll tell you why. Because I have real world application. These people just test things. So, all right. Uh, one of the ugly truths. They say EVs are not much fun to drive. Well. I can agree with that because, you know, being a racer guy, I like I like to hear my engines run. <laughs> I, li I don't like to, you know, not hear a car running. Uh, so to me, that takes away a lot of the joy. It probably doesn't bother a whole lot of other people, but it does. It does for me. So uh, so take that into consideration if you want it. Do you not want to hear your car? And, uh, you know, and it's actually a safety issue, which Tesla tried to address a couple of years ago. Uh, by making a, a sound, like a recorded sound, come out of the car when you step on the gas. It ended up actually sounding more like a fart. So uh, <laughs> take it for what it is there. So, all right, uh, the cobalt mining. This is more of a political thing and a, and a geological thing. Um, they, mine, they mine cobalt over in Africa and they use child labor. I don't want, like, again, I don't want to get too political about this because it's a, you know, a car show. But uh, something you have to consider. I mean, it's, it's not as clean as everybody puts them out to be. So um, there is a carbon footprint involved with building an EV, contrary to what the media would like to you know, push the other way. Uh, again, graphite's another one. There's a lot of minerals that get mined just to make a, an EV card. Uh, the charging network is a mess. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. There's not enough charging stations. Our infrastructure in this country is not ready for EVs. Uh, the range uh, that comes on a lot of these EVs are less than 200 miles. And, uh, you know, sometimes you get out near, you know, Pennsylvania up there in North Pennsylvania, and there's not enough chargers. Even if you stop at the rest area, they're working on it, but I don't know how many years it's going to take to get there. But as of right now, we're not ready. So... I actually had a customer that was <laughs> driving the Knobles up there in North Pennsylvania. She had a, a Tesla with a 158-mile range. She got halfway there before she realized that she needed a uh, a charger. <laughs> so she would have got stuck up there. So now let's talk about batteries. You know, I mean, we, the cost of the batteries are crazy. And all those materials that I was talking about, the minerals and stuff like that, that gets mined. All go in, a lot of it goes into these batteries, which is... Uh, uh, we're finding out that a lot of them is non-renewable. So as the battery loses its life, you're going to have to get a new battery. So uh, batteries in the U.S. markets have the EVs with a federally mandated warranty of eight years and 100,000 miles. Now, that, that sounds good, but people are putting on a lot more miles than we used to. I mean, you can run 100,000 miles in four or five years nowadays. So, uh, you know. Uh, California is requiring a warranty of 10 years and 150,000 miles, which is better, you know, but still, you got to weigh your options. Now, uh, you know, and this is still an unknown. You know, I was, I've been reading, like, in this section here, I've been reading, it's an unknown. Uh, so they're not really sure if they're going to last 150,000 miles. I see a lot of uh, Teslas and um, uh, some of the uh, Nissans. Uh, they're on the used car lots and nobody's buying them because the batteries are at half life. Now, if anybody knows anything about 
batteries like I've talked about before. Just because a battery says 50% and you've owned it for three years doesn't mean you're going to get another three years out of it. Usually when it hits a plateau of whatever percentage it is, whether it's 50 or 40 or whatever, it, it degrades really quickly. So you might not get five years or eight years out of a battery. And then the cost of the batteries, I've heard in Canada, somewhere around $50,000. Uh, I know for a fact I had a, a customer that came in with one, and the battery started at fourteen thousand dollars on their. To, uh, it was on a Lexus, so you, you know, the cost of the batteries to replace them is is really not worth it. You know, because if you do that and you say, okay, well, I'll just trade the car in, they're going to knock that down on you. So the value of the vehicle at this point is not worth it. So. Uh, so some of the, you know, those are, that's one of the biggest things is the battery. And then trying to get rid of the batteries in the cars when they get done. I've heard you know, good things, bad things. You know, I've heard lies and truths and saying the batteries end up in the junkyard. Uh, and then somebody comes on and says, no, they don't end up in the junkyard. Uh, they're going to end up in a junkyard. Maybe not all of them, but you're going to see a lot of them. And it's going to create a lot of contamination if the scrapyards even take them. So you might get stuck with a car that you just can't get rid of with a dead battery, a dead $14,000 battery. So uh, something else to consider at this point. Again, I don't want to sound like I'm beating up EVs all the time. And my opinions are my personal ones, but I have done the research, like I said. But at this point, these cars are not worth it. And, uh, and with the grid being the way it is right now, they're actually having a lot of problems with chargers. And... Another problem with the batteries is te they're very temperature sensitive. You might get a, a I've seen an F-150. I, I was reading on this on, uh, on Auto, um, Auto Trend. And, and a guy actually took, and he was the CEO of Ford, took an F-150, took it out on the road. It was a fully charged battery. It was 20-something degrees outside of Detroit. And the battery only lasted about 80 miles. Because the temperature is that much more uh, affecting on the battery. And I always say that also going uphill. So we'll put two things together. You can have, say you're up in New Hampshire and you want to go up in that Mount Washington. It's cold and it's steep. <laughs> you're not going to get to the top of the mountain with that, with any electrical ve electric vehicle right now. So uh, hopefully there's some work that needs to be done with these. Again... There's just some of the things that you need to, to know about EVs uh, so while you're making your decision to buy them. Uh, again, you got uh, lame infrastructure in the country right now, expensive batteries, the carbon footprint's not being uh, reported correctly, and the quality of the car is not there. Plus, they're ugly, so... <laughs> Somebody just sent a picture about uh, the they saw the Tesla truck. Oh my, uh, geez! They saw it on the road, and it's it's hideous. <laughs> it's hideous. It's actually hideous. I've never been a fan of the Tesla design, but whatever. Uh, Toyota makes a good hybrid. I'm a fan of hybrids. I'm okay with that. The batteries are still expensive, but they actually charge themselves back up. Uh, you won't have that range problem. You always have two sources of power going to you know going to that car uh toyota highlander and as far as toyota goes except for the prius um they make they put them in regular looking cars so i mean you can get a highlander or a rav4 uh, there's a couple others out there that look exactly like every other highlander or rav4 and they're fine it's just the priuses are still ugly so so uh nissan makes a good uh, uh hybrid car the uh, the electric cars from Nissan have a lot of issues. Uh, one of the big issues now with the older Leafs is they're not increase they're not manufacturing the software for them, and you cannot get parts for them. So if you have a 2010 or 2012 Nissan Leaf, you're going to have an issue because they're only making parts and software up to 10 years. So they're making you they're going to force you to buy another one. So and there's a lot of issues going on. But these are just some of the tips. Uh, take them for what they're worth. Take them, they're coming from me. Uh, like, again, I said some of them are personal opinions, and, but they are personal opinions formed by my research. 
and again, because I'm going to be around for a while, and I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to be working on hybrids, and oh, I already do, uh, working on hybrids and uh, electric vehicles. Don't see many electric vehicles right now, only for inspection. So, but uh, there's a lot to think about right now before you go and buy an EV. So, uh, in the meantime, if you got any questions? You can uh, go on go on my website. Uh, there be I'll put a lot of this information out there. It's a uh, www.fletchersgaragepa.com. Um, you can also I'll put a lot of this stuff on my uh, YouTube channel that we just started. It's called America's Mechanic, and uh, there's a lot of content on there for a lot of stuff. So, uh, um, you know, keep it keep in mind. You got any questions? You can always reach out to me any any way you can get there. It's at Fletcher's Garage, 480 Hood Boulevard, Fairless Hills, PA. 19030. Peace, bro. <laughs>